children, welcome to another time of Little Ark Sunday School. Thank God for how He has seen us through the week and now we are going to learn from the Word of God on this Lord's Day. Before we start, let us pray. Our gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this time. Thank you Father that we can come to learn from thy Holy Word and we pray Father that you prepare the hearts of the children as they come to listen to your word, help them to truly know thee, help them to be drawn close to thee, and help them, Father, to walk an obedient life, Lord. And we pray, Father, that thou would remove all distractions away from them, and that they will be able to pay attention to the learning of your word. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of our lesson today is Jacob Struggles with God. This is lesson 31. And Jacob Struggles with God. Okay, that's the title. And the subtitle is Give Up Self-Reliance. Giving up on self-reliance. Relying on oneself. And we're going to find out what it means in the account in God's Word today. Jacob Right? Jacob had left home to go to this place called Padanaram. Why did he leave home to go to this place? It was to escape from who? Escape from Esau. What happened? Why did he want to escape from Esau? If you had remembered the lesson that you have learned last Lord's Day, it was because Esau wanted to kill him. And why is that so? Because Jacob had deceived his father. He had bluffed his father. And he had also cheated Esau of the blessings which Isaac, their father, wanted to give to Esau. So he had to leave home because Esau wanted to kill him. So during his journey there, God, we see the faithfulness of God, even though Jacob had to leave home. But God was still with Jacob. God is everywhere. God is faithful. God confirmed his covenant with Jacob at this place called Bethel in Genesis chapter 28. And God also promised Jacob protection. Because as Jacob leaves home, he doesn't know what's going to happen to him. Right? Even as he's going to this place called Padanara, things may be uncertain. But God promised him that he would protect him. See how wonderful the God of the Bible is. The God that we know is. And at Padanaram, God blessed Jacob for the work that he did under Laban and gave him four wives and children. And they, Jacob together with his wives and children, they will be the tribe of Israel. They will make up the tribe of Israel. So even during this time, how did Jacob see God? Did Jacob see God as his God, even though God was so faithful to him? When he left home, God still confirmed his covenant with him. God also promised him protection. How did Jacob see God? During this time, Jacob saw God as the God of my father. That means this is the God that my father worshipped, my father believes, my father trusts in. Jacob did not say the God of, or my God, the God of Jacob himself. No, he said the God of my father. And the God of my father, the God of Abraham. Jacob at this point, he did not see God as his own God yet. And as God has commanded him, Jacob will now return home. Let me ask you a question, children. Who do people go to when they are in trouble? For example, if you are in trouble, who do you go to? Go to your parents, right? You go to, or when you are in trouble in school, when your parents are not with you, you go to your teacher, right? You go to maybe even the principal, all right? For people of the world, when something happens to them, when they fail, okay, or when they fall, who do they go to solve their problems? They will go to the government to help them, right, to probably medicine, you know, the problems can be ill health, health problems, and so they go to medicine, they take medicine, 
okay all to technology internet everyone is just using the internet now okay just a click of the fingers tap of the fingers on your phone very easy to find help but the problem is that they do not turn to God they do not trust in God to take care of them and Jacob here too in this account we learn that he did not trust God yet so in our first point the message today is when you trust in yourself when you trust in yourself what happens when you trust in yourself Jacob has to face the consequences of what he had done not you know how many years ago 20 years ago right whatever you do even if people has forgiven you or God has forgiven you you still have to face consequences and actually Esau, his brother, didn't really want to harm Jacob. Maybe he just said it out of anger. But he didn't really want to harm Jacob. But because Jacob was feeling guilty himself, you know he has done wrong. And he was very afraid. That's why he felt that, oh, Esau will really want to do something to me. So what did God do? God knows. God knows that Jacob was afraid, still afraid. Even though it's been 20 years. All right, what did God do? God sent angels. In this account, God sent angels to help him not to be afraid. To show them, to show Jacob that they will protect him. Right? You see the faithfulness of God. You know when Jacob ran away from Esau, all right, these angels were also there. And now when he returns, they were there again. And what does it show? It shows that God had been with Jacob. God has never left Jacob's side. And he has watched over Jacob. And if God has watched over Jacob in the past, God will also help him again. So God reminded Jacob of his promise. I promise you. And we know that the promise that God makes, God will surely keep. He's not like us men. We often break our promises. And even if we want to try hard to keep our promises, we will, we will sometimes incidentally break it. Because sometimes things happen and we can't keep our promise. So God reminded Jacob of his promise. And what's the promise? That he will protect him and to bring Jacob home safely. So with God's protection, will Jacob be safe? Yes, he will surely be safe. And Esau would not be able to harm Jacob. But, you see, God is already there to assure him, reminded him of his promise. But you see, Jacob being mad, we are so like that. They say, hey, yo, Jacob so lousy. We are so like that. Jacob was still afraid when he should not have been. God has already affirmed his promise to him personally. But he was still afraid. The problem with Jacob was that he trusted in this. What's this? Trusted in his own mind, in his own understanding, in his own intelligence. That is why he failed to trust God, even when God assured him. So if Jacob is one who trusts in his own understanding and in his own mind, what did he do? He planned, okay, because he feel that, oh, maybe I'm better, okay, maybe lah, huh? So he planned for a few methods to protect himself. The first method was he sent messages. Messages are, okay, people who he will tell this person, okay, you go and go to my brother Esau and tell him this, what I want to say. To send a message, okay, the message for him. He's not going to be there personally. So this person will go before him to tell him the message that he wants to give to Esau. So he sent messages, messengers before him. They will go first and then they will tell Esau, Esau, that Jacob is coming back. And also to ask for reconciliation. That means to make up, you know, you, if you're friends and then you quarrel. And after that, someone will tell you, hey, reconcile, come and reconcile. That means uh, stop being angry with each other, say sorry to each other, okay? And be friends again. And Jacob also wanted to see how Esau would react. This method is to see what's Esau's reaction. 
If Esau is still angry and says, I want to kill uh, my brother, well, then maybe he won't go back, okay? Because that will be what? Cutting death, right? Jacob was now a rich man, okay? He had many possessions. So when, all right, in this situation, what did he do? Even though he was very rich, if you are very rich, right, you won't call yourself a what? Servant. But he called himself servant of Esau. He called himself servant of Esau when he was with Esau. Why? To show that he is humble and that he's not above Esau. And it's also to make Esau feel good. Right? So that, oh, maybe Esau will not get angry already. Maybe his anger will go away, especially when he hears that, wow, my brother has called himself servant of me. What Jacob is doing, how, you know, he made Esau feel good, to flatter him, you know, it's flatter to say things, um, nice things about this person, and these things may not even be true, to curry favor him, because he hopes that Esau will not be angry anymore. Secondly, okay, not only did he send the messengers first and to tell Esau nice things and to, you know, make himself as a servant. Secondly, Jacob saw Esau come. He was, Esau was coming. And Esau was not alone. Esau was coming with some men. You know, this some men is how many men? 400 men. Well, that's a lot. Ayo, why is Esau coming with some more 400 men? If you come with so many men, it's like an army, right? What does it mean? To fight, is it? As if to fight, right? And he was very scared. He was very worried. And then he divided what he had, okay, his possessions and all that, into two groups. So he see, he used his own human wisdom again. He forgot that God told him, I will protect you. God will protect him. So he used his own human wisdom again. He divided what he had into two groups. So hopefully when Esau attacked this group, this other group can escape. If Esau attacked this other group, this other group can escape. So all won't die together. So he starts to think like that. Thirdly, Jacob prayed. Jacob prayed, all right? And when he prayed to God, this we can see Genesis chapter 32, verses 9 to 12. When he prayed, he called God. Did he say, God, my God, the God of Jacob? No, he still called God as the God of Abraham and Isaac. Jacob remembered what happened at Bethel. And Jacob remembered God's promise to him and how God said that he would bless him or yet bless him. But Jacob would not see God as his God until he go home safely. So this is why. Fourthly, Jacob sent presents. Uh, we are all like presents, right? Sometimes you're very angry with a person, right? Uh. Then the person send you present or the person else said, I want to treat you to a meal while you're no more anger, you're happy, right? So Jacob sent presents. So that hopefully Esau will not be angry with him anymore. So he sent presents. The presents went to Esau. He sent his family. The family went to Esau. But how about him? He stayed put. Not himself. He didn't go. He's scared. He sent them first. Test the waters first. He stayed behind because he did not trust that God will what? Protect him. So we see how Jacob, children, how Jacob made decisions using his own mind, his own human intelligence. And this is how, what he's been doing all this while. He only trusted in himself, in his intelligence. You know self-reliance, what's self-reliance? Self-reliance is when a person is confident in himself. I'm so confident I can do this, I can do that. I don't need to depend on people. I don't need to rely on people. It's the same. He feels that he does not need any help yet. So is it wrong to rely on yourself, to want to do things by yourself, like to tie shoelace yourself, to eat by yourself? Does it mean that after this lesson, you go and tell mommy, say, Mommy, Auntie Tammy says in this Bible lesson, or the Bible lesson says that I should not be self-reliant. You know, so uh, from lunch onwards, uh, you feed me, okay? I don't eat it by myself now wrong self-reliance okay it's not talking about that it's not always wrong 
There are times where we need to be independent and not to always depend on people for help. For example, what? We need to learn to feed ourselves, right? You see, Auntie Tammy, at this age, do I need my mommy to feed me? No, right? Even before we go to primary school, we already have to learn to feed ourselves. K1, K2, you have to learn to feed yourselves already. Mommy don't go chasing you, right? With the food, asking you to eat. We have to dress ourselves. We have to learn to bathe ourselves. Do things by ourselves. Brush teeth by ourselves. But when doing all things as children of God, children of God is those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, trusted in Him. We must depend on God. We need God to help us in all things like driving, God, everything, you know. As Christians, sometimes, most of the time, not sometimes, we take God for granted. Even in a matter of driving, because we're so used to driving, right? Like the adults so used to driving. We drive like how many hours a day? Drive every day. They forget that even when it comes to driving, you have to pray and ask God to grant you safety on the road. And Auntie Tammy learned this when I was when I was uh, growing up or when I was a young Christian, you know, when I would sit in the car of uh, other Christians. And before they start to drive, they say, come, let us pray. And I realized, yes, we must always depend on God. Always pray, even in driving. Driving, you need God, you know. God knows what will happen, whether this accident will occur in a few mere few seconds. God knows. Always pray. Even in simple things, you need Him. We need Him. So if we are God's children, we should never feel like, I don't need God in my life. That is wrong. That is how exactly Jacob is behaving. We should never think that, oh, I will do well without God. And we should not be proud of ourselves because of our intelligence and thinking that we do not need God. The next point, what is the next point? The next point is self-reliance given up. Self-reliance given up. And this is a good thing. When we start to give up relying on ourselves as children of God and to rely on God. Jacob, he needed to stop relying on himself. He needed to stop this. As long as he continued to rely on himself, he will not rely on God, he will not trust in God. And he'll continue to be in this spiritual state. He cannot continue to live his life this way because he does not look to God. And after Jacob was left alone, he struggled with a man alone. And this shows a spiritual struggle. This is actually, it shows a spiritual struggle between God and Jacob. And this happened at this place called Jabok. And the meaning of it is to wrestle. And this happened just before Jacob was to enter the promised land. And this struggle did not just happen for a while, but it lasted till the breaking of day, the next day, where it's morning when sunlight first begins to appear. And the angel, as what the Bible says, could not win against Jacob. Is it because the angel couldn't? The angel was weak? No. The reason was because Jacob would not give up relying on himself and it was until God did something what did God do God touched the hollow of Jacob's tie the hollow of Jacob's tie and made it out of joy and that was the sinew you know it's the sinew the sinew is what people say as the strongest muscle of the human body and when you hit this part when you hit this muscle it can be very dangerous it can be very fatal like for a wrestler. Only then, when God did that, then Jacob became weak. And when Jacob was too weak, he had no strength to fight. Then he stopped struggling. You see how strong his you know, self-will was. He wanted to rely on himself. So Jacob's problem was his self-will. He depended so much on himself. And over here, his self-confidence and his dependence on himself. He wanted to be dependent on himself all the time. What happened? He was crushed. Jacob must learn to obey God's plan, God's will in his life and to tell God, God, you take charge. 
You be the God of my life. You be the Lord of my life. And he must also trust God to fight for him. You know, Jacob, can he win Esau by his own strength? Esau came with how many men? 400 men, right? Jacob cannot. Can you say, oh, maybe we cannot win Jacob by his strength. Maybe can he win Jacob by his brains, his intelligence? No. Everything which she planned cannot save him from Esau as well. The man came at night, okay, the angel, and wanted to leave by daybreak. And when daybreak is when morning comes, so that his face will be hidden, and Jacob would not recognize him. And he also refused to tell Jacob his name and who he was. Later in this lesson, we'll find out who this man was. And after being broken, Jacob stopped fighting. And he asked, he pleaded for a blessing from this man. He knew that the man whom he wrestled with, he struggled with, was supernatural, not like him. And this man could bless him. So the man asked Jacob for his name. Not that this, the man does not know Jacob's name, he knows Jacob's name. But the reason why he asked Jacob for his name is to show his character. To show Jacob's character and his cheating ways. Jacob has never been on, has not been honest. He was deceived and deceived. And now God will give Jacob a new name. And this new name will also show a new character. This character will no longer be like the old Jacob. He will no more go back to depending on himself and not depending on God. So what was Jacob's name changed to? It was changed to Israel. He was no more Jacob the usurper, but Israel the prince of God. And he will also later form the nation of Israel. And this nation of Israel is the people whom God have chosen in the Old Testament times. And they are the people from which the Messiah, the Savior, will come from. So Jacob pleaded with who? God. So that was God. And he had God's blessings. Jacob had peace now. You see the difference? At first he was fearful. He worried. Now he had peace. He had no more fear. He had no more worry. And now he trusted in God. And he now had the courage to meet his brother. Why? Because God had helped him. And Jacob named this place Peniel. Peniel means face of God. Because Jacob recognized, Jacob saw that it was God who wrestled with him. And after this incident, Jacob limped. You know limp when you cannot walk properly, okay? And his limping also reminded him of the lesson that he learned. And his limping also showed that what happened was not a fairy tale, was not unreal, but it was real. So what did Jacob do? Now, he had the peace from God. He no longer was fearful. He was ready to meet Esau, his brother. He then divided the people. Okay, he divided the people. Did he say, okay, y'all go first, y'all go first, y'all go first, third group go first, fourth group go next, I go last. Let's see what he did. Now we see a change. He went first. He went ahead of everyone. His family were all behind him. He put them all at the back. He went first, in front of everyone. And where he was, he was in the most dangerous position. Where he was, he had, he had no one to hide behind. And, but the difference was, he was not scared anymore. He trusted that God would protect him. And he trusted in God now. He stopped trusting in himself. So as he was coming near Esau, as he was approaching Esau, what did he do? He bowed to the ground seven times. And this showed that Jacob was being humble. He was respecting Esau and he was submitting to Esau. Remember how he called himself as the servant. Esau is above him. And it also shows that he's very sincere. Jacob meant what he was doing now. 
So when the two brothers met, how was Esau? Was Esau like fierce? Wow, what do you do to me 20 years ago, huh? Did he do that? Esau was in fact affectionate, loving, and forgiving towards Jacob. He did not try to hurt Jacob in any way. And Jacob was brought safely into the promised land. So Jacob, when he met Esau, what did Jacob say? Jacob said this in Genesis chapter 33 verse 9. You can, you can also turn. Jacob said this, For therefore I have seen thy face, as though I had seen the face of God, and thou was pleased with me. What did he mean when he said that? It means that Jacob could see how God worked in Esau. How God had softened the heart of Esau and took away the anger that he had towards Jacob. So that when Esau now met Jacob, he was not angry anymore, but he was loving. You know what does this show, children? It shows that God is being very gracious, very good to Jacob. God had already worked in the heart of Esau to make him forgive Jacob. That's why Esau asked Jacob what he meant when he sent droves before him. Okay, presents, okay? Esau did not have any hatred for Jacob. So when he received the presents from Jacob, he did not expect them to be for Jacob to find grace in the sight of my Lord. So we see how Jacob's plan had no real use. He can really plan so properly, so meticulously, so what he planned and planned and planned. He may think that's the best plan, but it's no use. Why? Because God is the powerful one. God is the one who changed Esau's heart. So Jacob insisted, told Esau, No, you must take the gifts. You must accept these gifts. Previously, Jacob sent the gifts so that Esau would not be angry with him. But now, he wanted Esau to take the gifts. He insists. Why? Because it was his way of thanking God. To thank God for God's goodness to him. Because he said this in Genesis 33 verse 11, Because God has dealt graciously with me. That's why he wants to give, he insisted that Esau accept his gift. And Jacob also gave excuses to Esau, okay, and rejected. First Esau said, hey, come, come, let's go back together, let's journey together. But Jacob said, no, because where was Jacob supposed to be? He was supposed to be in the promised land in Canaan, all right? And Jacob then bought a piece of land at this place called Shechem. And there he built an altar, and he named this altar El Elohe Israel. El Elohe Israel. What does it mean? It means God is the God of Israel. God is the God of Israel. Who is called Israel now? Him. So what does it mean? God is the God of Israel. That means God is now my God. God had kept his promise. And Jacob also kept his too. He saw God to be his God. So we must not be self-reliant. What's the mean of self-reliant children? To rely on ourselves and not to trust in God, not to go to God, not to pray and ask God to help us. No. We must not trust in our own self to take care of our life. But as children of God, we must trust and depend on God. So what have we learned in today's lesson? What have we learned? Alright, ask ourselves the first point. Do we see God to be our God? Is God the God of our parents, our daddy, mommy, and not my God? The God of my sister, the God of my this church friend, but not my God? He must be your God. God loves you. God sent His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you. He wants you to come and believe in Him. And your mommy and daddy, they go to church, thank God. But they cannot help you to believe in Jesus. You cannot say, oh, mommy and daddy go to church, so I'm also automatically saved. No, you must come to believe in Jesus 
on your own. First of all, you must see that you are a sinner. And nothing can save you. Not good works, not by anything you do. Because we have all sinned. Come and believe in Jesus. And Jesus must be your God. Not the God of somebody else, but your own God. Next, surrender your life to God. Give your life to God. If you have believed in Jesus Christ, you must give your life to God. You no longer is the master of your own life. But now everything that you do must be for the Lord. The third point, don't do things using your own strength and intelligence. From the example that we have learned from Jacob, if you do things using your own strength and intelligence, you realize that you fail, you'll be frustrated, especially if you call yourself a child of God. But what must we do? We must trust God, the next point, to guide and to help you. Everything we can do is by God's grace, not in anything not, not through ourselves, not by our own intelligence, but by God's grace. Lastly, pray and commit everything to God. And at the end of the day, you thank God for seeing you through. So today, for our memory verse, is taken from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. Alright, this is a passage, or the verse that we are familiar with but let's memorize it okay before that let's read the two verses let's read the reference and then the text one two three reading proverbs chapter three verses five to six trust in the lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths once more Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So memorize this. Remember, there's always good when we memorize the word of God, and not just memorize it, but to do, to obey the word of God. Let us pray. Our gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we truly want to thank you for this time when we can come to learn your word on this Lord's Day. Father, we pray that you will be with the children, even help them, Lord, to truly know thee as their Lord and Saviour, that thou will be their God. And help them, Father, to acknowledge thee, Lord, as the Lord of their lives, and to submit, Lord, in all things as unto thee. We also pray, Father, that you will help us, Lord, not to depend on our own intelligence or our wisdom, but to always trust in thee, to always trust in your wisdom and in your ways. We pray, Father, that you keep the children very close to thee, even as they study, even as they go about in their daily lives, that you help them, Lord, to always look to thee, to depend on thee. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.